Hello and welcome to UPSC Preparation Simplified, an initiative by Rao's IS Study Circle where we focus on the needs of you, the aspirant who is preparing for the UPSC examination. And we are aware of the fact that UPSC has just conducted UPSC mains examination. In this context, we should focus on very high impact portion or topics as well. One such topic is science and technology. And today we are going to interact with Mr. Akshay Vrat, sir, who is going to help us in terms of understanding the trend that UPSC has reflected in this mains examination. So, sir, Thank welcome you. on board. Thank you, sir. So, sir, what is your first impression in terms of the paper? How was the paper? Was it in line with the trend analysis? And what was the impact of current affairs? Sir, I think the paper was very much predictable. Uh, UPSC has followed the similar trend. Mm -hmm. There have always been almost two to three questions on science. This time also the trend was followed in the same way. And the best part is that this time we saw the question paper which was somewhat related to current affairs. In fact, very much dependent on current affairs and very much inclined towards everyday life questions also. Mm -hmm. So this makes the question paper somewhat easy for any student to answer. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, I would say that this time the question paper was based on current affairs and also easy for everyone to attempt. Okay. Now, if we look into the questions, there were three questions. Uh, one question which I really liked a lot was the question on S400. Sir. And they asked a very specific thing about S400 that mm -hmm. how it is, you know, comparable to its contemporary. Mm -hmm. right. There are so many contemporaries. How to define which contemporary is being discussed or is required to be discussed according sir. to the UPSC? So, sir, for a question on S400, I would say that if a student is trying to attempt that answer, then I would say that initially they should mention about the some few of the characters of S400. Most of the characters are related to their range, their operational range, their height at what altitude they can hit and what are the what are the other characters like if it is mobile, if it is stationary or some things. Mm -hmm. Based on the same criteria, we can define other, uh, you know, interceptor or other similar kind of um, defense, pro defense systems of the other countries. So normally I, I tell students that we know that USA, Russia, Israel, to a certain extent, China as well. These are the countries which are considered to be at par with that of, you know, with each other and they are right now manufacturing most of their defense hardware to other countries. Mm -hmm. So they have a, a sort of technical superiority when it comes to other countries. Mm -hmm. So I normally consider student that take example of American air defense system, take mm -hmm. example of Russian, take example of the Israeli defense system of the similar kind and then you can have a comparison. Mm -hmm. So that will suffice the entire requirement of the question that we have. So like when you compare it with the Russian, like we already have the Russian system, so mm. that sets the benchmark in this case. Mm. When you compare it with the American, we have Patriot and Thard there. Mm -hmm. Now the difference between the S400 and the Thard and Patriot is their operational range. Mm -hmm. You know, Patriot is of a low range. Uh, Thard is somewhat higher range, but still it doesn't match 400 kilometer range of mm. our own uh, S400. Uh, and then on top of that, although they both provide a high level of mobility, but in terms of accuracy to long distance targeting, it does not match with S400 again. Mm -hmm. And when you compare it with the Israeli Iron Dome system, mm -hmm. Iron Dome and, and you know connected with Barak missiles, we know that Iron Dome is something which is having a very high operational range up to 600 kilometers, but at the same time it is immobile. Mm -hmm. So when you consider Indian requirement, Indian terrain, we have the Himalayan region at the you know in, in the northern side, mm -hmm. which provides us a natural defense against China and Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So when you compare the Indian terrain, the Indian requirement, it's very obvious that we may not be looking at a fixed or a geographically fixed uh, you know. Uh, 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 defense system mm -hmm. and where this is the area where S400 fits in with all the requirements of the country. Of course. Mm -hmm. And one thing we can actually also highlight that uh, when we were actually buying this S400, Sir. these were the systems which were in contention as well. Exactly. exactly. So uh, US system mm -hmm. was there, Israel yes. system was there, which mm -hmm. can actually help us understand, okay, like, where we need to compare as well. Yes. And now, you in, in fact, I would like to add so, a sure, small sir, sure, point sir. here. Mm. Uh, like you mentioned that they were already the ones which were in discussion, which were in competition with S400. Mm. So that time itself, Hindu itself, Hindu newspaper was covering so many news compared mm. to, you know, in comparison of S400 with that of Thard, mm -hmm. because America itself they proposed us to buy Thard instead mm -hmm. of S400. Mm -hmm. So there was news related to international relations also that that at mm -hmm. the same moment. Mm -hmm. So this makes it you know a question that was fairly easy for most of the students who are seriously following current affairs. Mm -hmm. They would have answered it easily without mm -hmm. any prior understanding of defense or defense technology as such. Now the second question which actually uh, captured my attention as well Sir. to a very strong extent was mm -hmm. the question biotechnology. True. This looks more like something which is related to say static part or the core Sir. aspect. But there is a recent occurrence as well. Uh, we have seen that biotechnology has become so damn important. Exactly. So what are your thoughts on this particular question? 
biotechnology sir as you said that it is fairly a very important topic when it comes to civil service exams and it it not only affects uh, science and uh, science as a subject but it also has an influence on agriculture economy and such areas so biotechnology like in this particular exam it was a question asked based on the uh, r&d the achievements in the area of biotechnology and then how it affects in uplifting the poorer section of the society mm. so when you talk about the you know the contemporary technologies available in bio biotechnology i would say that student can simply list out some of the things like there are technology like crispr cas9 is a very popular technology then very common in dna technique mm -hmm. they can talk about gene therapy they can they can talk about genetic engineering as a whole dna fingerprinting and such areas mm -hmm. so the list of the technologies it's completely comes from the notes or the books that we have but when it comes to the application part on poorer section of the society this is where i i would suggest that try to create dimensions on the basis of the areas which are relevant for social welfare mm -hmm. so we have that food security is one of the aspect mm -hmm. biotechnology has helped us to create a better yield they help us to you know reduce the impact of uh, uh, in in improve the nutritional quality of the food of course and then we can talk about health standards mm -hmm. how it can help how it is helping reducing pesticides reducing exactly, the need of fertilizers exactly, yes, uh, fertilizer pesticides so it makes the products also more environmentally sustainable and also the effect on the health can be minimized mm -hmm. and on top of that when you talk about health so ex increasing the life expectancy life span has been increased mm -hmm. then we can talk about cheaper medication cheaper vaccination of course quick, uh, you know faster you know inclusion of vaccination in the society so we can give example of mission in the dhanush there that how india has been improved has has increased up to 15 vaccines we are now providing mm -hmm. when we started with only polio and such vaccine now we are providing 15 vaccination under the mm -hmm. universal immunization program mm -hmm. so such kind of uh, things can be written easily on top of that student if they want they can also add dimensions based on uh, you know making environmentally sustainable products mm -hmm. making in fact to a certain extent we can talk about that it has made lot of consumer goods also cheaper yes yes they do so that is also one aspect which biotechnology can easily touch so this answer is also some bit somewhat which people can answer with their common sensical knowledge also mm -hmm. i would say now one question which actually intrigued me rather more uh, was the question on blue led so right. the the if i talk about the the development it has happened 2014 15 yes. primarily and now the question is asked now uh, so what was the reason why upsc has asked this question so late or is there anything which is happening in the recent time which has which has made this very important even i also found that question quite surprising when i saw the question for the first time even i was also quite surprised that this shouldn't be the question that i expected mm. so uh, but when you look into the question you would realize that the purpose of sharing the information of nobel prize of 2014 is just superficial mm -hmm. it doesn't really give any it doesn't really affect the quality of the answer that a student is supposed to write down mm -hmm. the second part of the question itself is very clear mm -hmm. in terms of defining that why this question has been asked mm -hmm. so we know that blue leds they have a huge impact on the current state of our consumer goods mm -hmm. we know that these white lights that are possible today mm -hmm. it, it wouldn't be possible without the invention of the blue, LEDs, blue leds because red and yellow LEDs were already there they were invented way back in 1960s hmm. so blue LEDs they have completed the entire spectrum and that ensures that now white light is now possible mm -hmm. so this has given us that given us that ad added advantage that now we can introduce blue uh, white light into different different consumer goods mm -hmm. so we know that these lights are of course are, they are energy efficient they mm -hmm. are they have a much higher longevity mm -hmm. their luminous intensity is also higher mm -hmm. so based on these characteristics we can define things like uh like how government of india is promoting led lighting mm. so we have national program on led lights we have ujala uh, you know initiatives mm -hmm. where government of india is trying to reduce the carbon footprint increase the overall longevity mm -hmm. of and it is also adding on to the infrastructure of the country mm -hmm. it is building up the infrastructure not only on the on on, on road sides and such thing it is also building up the manufacturing capacity of the country mm -hmm. then looking at the question that was asked on everyday life how it affects then we can talk about lot of consumer goods that we have mm -hmm. around us like television sets you know your computers laptops they have been they have been become, they have become thinner slimmer and also more efficient mm -hmm. more energy efficient because of these lights mm -hmm. so student can simply mention about the list of all the consumer durables which where there is a some there is some or the other use of these lighting systems mm -hmm. so in that way they can uh, overall they can write a good answer but here i would like to mention from my side because this question is for 250 words mm -hmm. so for the previous questions it was easier to easily uh, come up with the relevant points this question is particular for 250 words so i would suggest a student that when they write you know about the initiatives taken by government of india in this regard they should they can slightly elaborate on the mm -hmm. on the dimensions on on the importance of such initiatives mm -hmm. in that way they will be able to sum up with sum up the entire answer in a good way 
Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Now, there is one thing that students worry a lot, mm-hmm. and that is, sir, what are the right resources to prepare sure. this science and technology mm-hmm. section? So, what is your suggestion? Uh, how sh- can students prepare this uh, topic efficiently? That's true, sir. They are, the study materials are not there. They are, there is no standard book on science. Mm. So, although I often tell student that, you know, if you are a student of Rao's IES, then in that case, they have the option of picking up either the NCRT or they can pick up our own compass mm. in-house mm. Um, magazine and in-house textbook, I would say. Mm. It's not a magazine anymore. It's a proper textbook mm. now. So they can come up with the in-house compass a compass book that we have. Mm-hmm. Then on top of that, we release you know periodic publications of Focus magazine are mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Then at the end of the session, there are QIPs. Of course. QIPs in fact are going on from beginning nowadays. Mm-hmm. So there are there 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 is a multifaceted you know uh, areas from where they can pick up the data. Mm-hmm. But one thing I would like to tell students that there is no need to dig deeper mm-hmm. because science as a purpose uh, science has a purpose for civil services mm-hmm. like science is not a subject that upsc wants to check the knowledge of the student mm-hmm. they use the subject to in order to understand how the student can apply things of course uh, you know can help in solving the issues of the country mm-hmm. so learn science from the perspective of solving problems mm-hmm. there, there is no need to learn science from the perspective of becoming a scientist eventually such <laughs> things that's very so, important uh, i guess so I I normally tell students that whatever you study, even our own study materials, are, uh, because you have been involved in uh, the team for such a long time, mm. and I have also recently understood that how we have been making things. So we have been considering things, particularly for the purpose of UPSC. Yes, of course. So even when you look at the Focus magazine, it doesn't, uh, you know, emphasize on the aspect of the concept. It emphasizes on the aspect of the application that mm-hmm. how it can really help, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in answering questions on civil services. Mm-hmm. So that is one area which can be very supportive for the students. Secondly, for those students who are not students of our institution, they can, I would normally suggest this for everyone, mm. not only for our and for other students that do not ignore NCRT. Mm-hmm. Although you may not be able to expect questions directly from NCRT, but I would still suggest that follow the NCRT a little because NCRT gives you at least the basic insight about the subject. The foundation aspect. Yes, foundation, ex- exactly, sir. You don't have to emphasize on the concept, mm-hmm. but you have to emphasize that why these things are important. Mm-hmm. What is the purpose that how they can solve? Mm-hmm. What purpose that they can deliver? Mm-hmm. Those aspects of NCRT are still quite relevant. Mm-hmm. And then you have to supplement it from the you know open source material that we are providing DNS. Mm-hmm. You know, and Focus magazine is also openly available. People can subscribe to the magazine also. Of course. And on top of that, they can if if not uh, for the entire course, but I would st- definitely suggest QIPs are something which can give them an added advantage of, of course. last minute revision. Now I would actually highlight that all three questions that we have seen in mm-hmm. the paper were also covered in QIP. Exactly. Of course, they were exactly. covered in the classes as right. well, but it was also covered in QIP. Yes, true. Now this is one thing which I liked a lot about this communication. You said. That that you are not expected to become a scientist you are right. expected to become a civil servant yes. now here there is one interesting question exactly. there was a question of cryptocurrency in exactly. gs paper right. 1 exactly and that was very interesting because mm. it talked about indian society per se right. so uh, what the way you have put it across mm. i think that actually justifies that mm. that you have to understand the topic from the perspective of being a civil servant and how it is going right. to impact True. so any thoughts about being interdisciplinary in nature of science and technology this is a perfect example i would say sir because uh, we understand that science, what we study, it impacts the society in some way or the other. In fact, I often say that when you study history, history is nothing but the history of science mm-hmm. itself. Mm-hmm. Because scientific temper shapes history of, mm-hmm. of that period. So uh, this particular aspect, this particular question shows that how science is now able to create a social current as well. Mm-hmm. In fact, sir, in the last 20 years, when we see mm-hmm. our entire consumption pattern, our entire investment pattern has been very influenced by the innovations in the area of science. Mm -hmm. Like blockchain technology created the background for uh, cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. And now cryptocurrency itself has, you know, shaped up how the youth of the country is going to invest in future, Mm -hmm. where the youth see the next, uh, you know, uh, uh, assets Mm -hmm. are are going to be lying or where the youth think that this is where the people should be investing in Mm -hmm. eventually. Mm -hmm. Similarly, there are other channels, uh, other things which have, which have, which have been created by science like social media. Mm -hmm. It has been fairly affecting and influencing the political opinion, social opinions of the people. Mm -hmm. And then we are seeing on at the same time, we see other aspects of science also, which help, help us in affecting lot of our opinions based on the idea of these recent farm, farm laws issues and some, some of the issues, we are seeing a lot of social media and, and you know, uh, other, as, other tools of science and technology we saw that they were able to create. I think, sir, this point to fix it. Fix it. So, like you mentioned that, uh, you mentioned about cryptocurrency already. So, that's a very important impact of science, how science is affecting the society. So, we are, th- there are three, four aspects of science that we see where you know, science has a direct impact on the social current, on social structure of the uh, social and cultural practice of the society that we have. 
like for example you mentioned about cryptocurrency there are other issues also like social media mm-hmm. is you know today we see netflix and ott platforms creating an impact on our viewership and such of things of course so it shows that how science is affecting our consumption pattern overall mm-hmm. so this question that has been asked it shows a very nice bridge mm. between the scientific disciplines and the how the indian society how the indian social structure is going to respond to those scientific of course, disciplines of course of course so like we know that blockchain made the base for cryptocurrency so that was a scientific innovation but how it is affecting us is something which we are seeing omnipresent in the society <laughs> so that is an area where students should definitely highlight <laughs> especially and for these thing they don't have to look very far <laughs> just follow the trends because most of the students who are appearing for civil service they are well versed with the technology <laughs> they are well versed with the <laughs> current popular the popular culture that we say they are well versed <laughs> with that <laughs> so how that popular culture is affecting the society just create just keep a keen observation of how these things are affecting the consumption pattern they can even see that in their houses nowadays mm-hmm. you know like my father he watches more youtube than i do <laughs> so he is more addicted to youtube in uh-huh. that case so one thing is very clear that this is def- th- these innovations are definitely affecting mm-hmm. you know our day to day lifestyle our family relations such things so this is one aspect of science that has a cu- good impact on civil service exam and we can expect more questions like this in future okay so i think that this mm. particular discussion with you mm. must have brought great clarity in the minds of the students and mm. we hope that this will actually lead to some simplicity in their approach as well mm-hmm. because a lot of time they are uh, worried about nothing mm-hmm. and uh, the way you have explained it i think uh, it actually sums up very well that you need to have limited resources sure. do them well relate with the current affairs focus on the syllabus this is all that is going to help them in order to crack the upsc examination right. so thank you sir thank you for your time you, all sir. those people who are on the other side of the screen you need to understand that preparation for the upsc examination is an approach that you follow and it actually is reflected in your way of handling the syllabus limiting your resources finding the right resources and repeating them many times over in this context you can definitely use the resources of rao's ias we are very happy to actually share all this knowledge wisdom and we want to make this journey of yours much more simple much more exciting at the same time something which can actually impart a temperament to become a better civil servant from the entire team of rao's ias we wish you all the very best take very good care and stay tuned for more videos